a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be a video on the Calder Cup playoffs as we check in on them Calder Cup playoffs as this is going to be a analysis of the series that have completed thus far in the second round, the best of five series of the Calder Cup playoffs. As we'll start with the first game from May 6th in the Laval versus Syracuse series. In that one, the Syracuse... Well, actually, no, that series isn't completed yet, so let's just skip over that one because... Uh, I actually misspoke because that series isn't completed yet. So we'll start with the Admirals and the Manitoba Moose. That was May 6th, where the Milwaukee Admirals, the eventual winning team of the series, were able to capture this one 3-2. to two. Uh, The Manitoba Moose did have the shot count in their favor big time. So this game, you got to give claps up and first star, I would say, even though they gave it to Novak in the game because he had three assists, which is fine. I thought Tommy Novak played a stud game, but I think you really got to give it to Devin Cooley because Devin Cooley was the one that stopped it in cage. They rode the momentum of their goaltender, as all great coaches say teams do, and that's exactly what got them to that 3-2 to victory, riding the momentum of their goaltender, Novak then getting the three assists, and uh, Burke, Donovan, and Schneider, of course, scoring as well got them to that 3-2 to two win in Game 1. And then when it comes to Game 2 in that series, the Milwaukee Admirals were able to compound it with another win, but guess what? They only had... This is ridiculous. I mean, how good their goaltending's done. Devin Cooley, after Ingram stepped up for them in season, obviously, and then was up with the Preds, came back down, but Cooley has such a hot hand, why the hell would you take him out of net? After he faced a plethora of shots, 42. The power play went 0 for 3 for Manitoba in Game 1. He faced 42 shots in Game 1, and his team only got in Game 1 21 shots on cage. Well, in Game 2, they only got 16 shots on cage, and still won 2-1 to one with Burke and Huntington, as Morgan Barron was the only moose to be able to get it past Cooley as he made 43 saves on 44 shots. I mean, Devin Cooley has been on another level in this series, and you, you just got to give the hats off to him. I mean, a big he was the biggest reason, I would say, the Admirals won the series because Game 1 and Game 2, he was point A reason why they won that series, and you got to give the claps up and hats off to him. That is for damn sure. And then, when it comes to... The third game of that series, that was a 5-2 to two win for the Manitoba Moose as they were able to bounce back in that game as they finally have the shot totals go their way and they finally have the power play go their way where the difference in that game was really the special teams because they gave the Admirals a lot of special teams chances and they went 0-7 where the Moose had 4 and were 50% on it. So the difference in that game was really the special teams that ended up doing in the Admirals because they couldn't capitalize on that. But in the next game, in the fourth game of that series, um, that was when the Manitoba Moose were able to capture another win as they had by far, not even close, by far their best game of the series as their offense outbursted as you can't really... I think, put this on the goaltender or anything of that nature um, when it comes to, for the Admiral, because Connor Ingram kind of just got shellocked in that game as they lost 7-3, to three, as you just got to give claps up to the Moose. They were showing they fought adversity and elimination twice and were able to come back. But then the Milwaukee Admirals, in the end, were still able to prevail as the Moose fought off elimination twice, but in the vintage great game five, Morgan Barron was the only guy to be able to score again, as the uh, Milwaukee Admirals from Parsonen and Tommy Novak, who had a hell of a series, were able to get the win. Novak was obviously one of the stars of that game, and also I would say Ingram coming in cage, only allowed one goal, was sharp in that game. You can give a star over to him as well. So that was the Admirals and Moose series. That one I did call wrong, so uh, not that that matters, but that one I did end up uh, predicting in the wrong uh, category. But no big deal there. We do have the Rochester Americans um, 
that series is not over yet versus the Utica Comets. That's been a very good series this far. So I'll recap that one once that series concludes as well. But we do have a series sweep we have to talk about. I honestly thought this series would be tighter than it was. Um, the Stockton Heat swept the Bakersfield Condors as... Um, there just wasn't any fight in that series um, whatsoever. And um, the, the the Condors were not able to really get it going. And that was a big issue for them in that series as a whole. And um, I guess I just didn't take notes on that series. But uh, in the first game, they fell 3-1. to one as a, they were able to get two goals in the first, the Heat were, so you can't let uh, Pelletier and Pedersen were able to get them. You can't let a team that, once they're up, yet they never really give up the lead, get that good of momentum early. The the um, Condors did, and that did them in. And then in the second game, I thought the Condors played a much better game. Um, Gallant was able to score the first goal of the game, but then Malone answered right away, and then the Condors scored after D. Simone scored only 39 seconds in, only seconds later themselves by Broseo. So I thought that was a very good battle back and forth game, but unfortunately for the Condors, Pedersen was able to get the goal at 7.02, and they were able to come up top, and uh, the Heat were able to win that game. And then as we go to Game 3, uh, as I have to fast forward ahead here, that was the goal-scoring onslaught, one of the goal-scoring onslaught games of this first, well, not of the first round, but of the second round, the first round of the best of five series, as that was just shots galore, both teams over 40 shots, both teams were successfully two for three on the power play, but when you give power plays to a team that amped of the Stockton Heat and you're playing a goal-scoring onslaught game with them, you're probably not going to beat them, and the Condors found that out the hard way as they fall 6-4. to four. Great valiant effort in games 2 and 3 in this series by the Condors. Have it probably give them a C-plus or something for the series, but you still got to give the Heat that B-plus to A-minus because, yes, they could have played tighter defensively in the final game, but they still won the offensive onslaught with them. And in the end, that is really all that matters if you're actually able to capitalize and get the W in the end. And then the Checkers, this was a series, that was a series um, <clears throat> that I obviously would have picked the Heat in as well, but um, the the Condors, I thought, would have at least captured one game. They did not. Where Bridgeport did end up capturing their veteran guys one game in the series against the Checkers, which was impressive for them in that right, where they ended up losing that series 3-1, to one, where the Checkers got off to a great 3-2 to two win in the first game of that series, and then in a double OT, they won 7-6 to six to Charlotte Checkers in a ridiculous goal-scoring um, onslaught. Was Zach Dalpy, the veteran AHL, or was able to complete it in the end? you got to have your veterans step up in those moments, and that is exactly what the Checkers were able to have. But then fending off elimination, uh, they were able to have two key goals, the star of the game, Simon Holmstrom, was able to have two key goals in that game to fend off elimination. But then Dolpy comes up big again and almost brought back the checkers scoring at 19-22. But the Bridgeport Islanders were able to win 3-2 to before they were ousted in the next game in a 4-0 to win as the checkers really just poured it on in this game. McCormick had a Hattie and Zach Dolpy, the veteran who had a great series himself, was able to score again. Obviously, McCormick's the star of that game. Dolpy would have a second star. So I thought the Checkers, they just showed how ridiculous they are and how much of a colder contender they are in that series. And to be quite honest, that wasn't necessarily unexpected uh, whatsoever. And now we'll go into the final series we're going to talk about in this video, which is the Colorado Eagles against the Ontario Reign, where definitely have to eat crow in this series. I was very wrong. I thought the Reign were actually going to win. Uh, because I thought the rain were actually starting to really get going. This was a battle of what you thought were two really good teams, and then it looked like one team was just really good as they got railed on 10-1 to 1, as the Colorado Eagles deserve an A++++++++ grade on that game. And then once we go into the next game, that was the game that really just turned the tide of the series because in this game, the rain did have a lot of fight, obviously. Crow scored first. No, uh, Nelson Noger come back, came back, 
Allard scored Thomas and Tikachev for them. Magna um, scored two goals of all people for, uh, well, actually not of all people, but he scored two goals, Wagner and then Foodie. The youngster was the hero in overtime, Gene Luke Foodie, the youngster stepping up for the Colorado Eagles, probably a future avalanche or nhl -er <coughs> for somebody else uh, going forward because he's a very solid player, but Gene Luke Foodie was able to step up. And then here we go to the final game of this series. As the Colorado Eagles won 5-2, played a good defensive game. Magna stepped up again. Maltsev was had a very good game. And this was just, that OT game was basically all she wrote. As soon as I was watching that game and I thought the Reign were honestly going to have a chance to win it, once they did and I'm like, this series is over. I have to eat crow on this. I'm completely wrong. The Ontario Reign did not have it in this series. The Eagles had all the answers for the Reign. And you got to give them an A++++ for that. Series, and now we will move in to the final series where the Chicago Wolves, this one's going to be quick because the Wolves are by far one of the best colder contenders. We talked about the Checkers, the other C team, well, the Wolves. I would say the Charlotte Checkers and the Chicago Wolves might be two of the bigger contenders of, uh, as well as the Utica, but two of the biggest contenders, I would say, where that series is not over with Utica and Rochester, where Rochester is actually playing them really good right now. So we'll have to see what happens there where Utica might not even be there to be the colder contender. But the Chicago Wolves had a great 4-1 to win as the only guy that was able to score was Regula. And then uh, Ponomariev, LaJoy, Smith, and Levo were able to score for the Chicago Wolves. So getting off to a great start. And then guess what? Keeping with the theme. A great 4-1 to win as Ladino, Smith, Drury, and Paul Tarolsky, um were able to score one of the best AHL players in Paul Tarolsky was able to score for the Chicago Wolves, and then they had in that first game of the series, um, the Wolves, as they kept with the theme of 4-1 to one in the 2-3 and three game, as I just skipped over the first game, because you know that's not important, they killed them 6-2 to two anyway, right? That was the game, they murdered them 6-2, to two, then won 4-1 to one and 4-1, to one. so realistically, the Ice Hogs were just outmatched in this series. Their offense wasn't able to get going. It was pretty reminiscent of the Colorado Avalanche versus Nashville, where the the off the goaltender played fine, um, and the the offense when the goaltender played fine in the four to one games, were just not able to get going in front of the goaltender. And obviously, that's not going to get you anywhere if your goaltender is playing good for you in Arvid Soderblom in the four to one games. And you're just not able to score more than one goal. So having, what would it have been, two, two, four total goals in three games is not going to win it for you against one of the best teams out there in the Chicago Wolves and one of the better goaltenders out there um, in the AHL in Alex Lyon. So if you're not putting anything on him, you're not going to beat him. But this has been a video on the Calder Cup playoffs being massively exciting and enticing this far as this is the Sports Fanatic News reaction to the round series that are completed thus far in the best of fives as i'll recap the other ones as they get completed peace out everybody and stay safe and please subscribe down below or above on the easy to keep us growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of